What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing a coffered ceiling. It's gonna have a perimeter beam, actually a half perimeter beam. And that's what we're getting the table saw set up now to rip the framing for that. We got our framing lumber over here. This is actually our second day on the job site here. Yesterday we had to do a ton of prep work. I had to move a vent and relocate four can lights. So you know how long that takes. It takes like all day. And this morning we just put the uh, drywall compound over those repairs and then we'll spray texture on it once we get the framing up. So at this point, we're getting ready to start cutting some wood. So I thought it'd be a good time to start the video. It's gonna be a four by four coffered ceiling. It's gonna have 16 coffers total. The room is roughly 15 by 13 and a half. So right now I'm getting ready to rip that perimeter beam. So let's get to it. All right, I got these two by six by 14s and you guys know I like to frame this stuff with two by, but I'm gonna see if I can rip this alone on the cut hub outfeed here. Should be pretty cool. Yes, it works. So this is the half rip of a one by six for our perimeter half beam. And we need to figure out how far we're gonna make our blocking come down for this application. So I'm gonna do some math. Once I figure this out, we'll screw it together. That's the offset. Then you got three quarters from there. Okay. So a three inch, three inch blockings. So the way this is gonna work, we're gonna screw in from the top down into our blocking, and then we'll screw up from the bottom up into our joist in the room, and then our one by material will wrap this. Now, since we're having a five and a half inch board, which is a one by six, we're using the Windsor one boards, we're gonna drop that thing a half inch from here. So my hand right here represents the ceiling, and we're gonna drop our one by six, they were wrapping these beams in half inch from there. Okay, so that'll put us about over here. So all we need to know now is we need to back off an inch and a half back up from this half inch drop. So hopefully that makes sense. The reason we're doing that, we're dropping a half inch here is because we don't want to depend on those joists just being perfectly flush one with another. We don't want to have to them working against us. So we'll back off an inch and a half here, and that'll get us the dimension of our blocking. So hopefully that makes sense. It, to me, when I was saying it, it, it really didn't sound like it made sense, but you'll see what I mean when we get in there. So now that I have my framing lumber ripped and my dimensions for my blocking figured out, we're gonna go inside and take some measurements. We already obviously have all the lines chalked out and we have this thing laid out because we needed to do that first to see where to move the vent, where to move those lights. So we'll go inside, take some measurements, and I'm gonna do that using this right here. This is the Bosch Blaze, my absolute favorite laser measuring device. Dead on accurate to the 16th, which is perfect because the Fat Max measures in 16ths. So we got 164 and three quarters. We'll just do 164 and a half, back off a quarter, give us an eighth of play on each side. All right, so I got my first piece cut right here, and we know our blocking needs to be three inches, so I'll just mark three inches here. And what I can do here is I'll line up my blade on that mark, and then I just make a pencil mark on the base of the saw, and then that's exactly where I need to stop it to make these small blocks. It works really good for small things like this. So then I'll just use my uh, good old human eye in feeling to line this up. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be flush with the edges.
Nice. We'll do the other side. The other side will be the same exact thing. We'll take a measurement with the laser, but I measured this room and it was pretty square. So uh, yeah, we'll repeat the process on the other three sides and then we'll get to the inside with the actual full size beams. So now that that's done, we're going to install everything that goes in between the perimeter. So our joists run this way in this direction. So we're going to start by installing the boards that go perpendicular to that. And then all the little pieces that go in between, we're just going to install those after and pocket screw them into the perimeter board and the boards that we install right now. So the only one that's going to be a little tricky is the one right in the middle, because we're going to have that ceiling fan. Or actually, it's not a ceiling fan. It's a fixture. It's going to be like a 100-pound fixture, though. So I got a ceiling fan safe metal box, so we'll be good to go. It says it's rated for 150 pounds. So I got to drill out the hole for the existing electrical through this. And then I got to frame a little spot for the new box. And then uh, just mount it and throw it up there. So that was uh, 87 and a half. And then this thing will be mounted pretty much right, right under it. Um, doesn't have to be perfect because you can actually slide this thing on the rail and then tighten it up. But what I need to do is punch out one of these punch outs right here. You can see you can have either one. It really doesn't matter for us. We got plenty of slack on that line. But I'll just take something like this and punch that out. So now I have a hole for that to get through. And then there's a little uh, rubber piece that goes in there that holds the wire. And I'll put that on. So in the kit you get this uh, hardware. And included in that is this here. And this will just pop in through here. Like that, so when you feed the wires through, it has a, a grab action to it and it won't let it pull back through. So I'm just gonna make sure this is squared up with my pencil lines here. So now that I have it centered this way with the room, I need to center it this way with the room. And that's easy because we have our chalk lines in there. As long as we center this board, I can just center this on this board and it's done. So I did the math on that and that means this bracket right here needs to have an inch and five eight reveal on each side. So I'll simply just mark that, line it up and uh, screw it in. So we'll do an inch and five eighths. Since this thing adjusts, I centered it off the fixed side, and then my adjusted side will go to that 16. We're going to put the rest of our brackets on this thing, uh, or our blocking rather, and then this thing will be ready to toss up there, feed the wires through, and uh, move on to the easier ones. You turned it off, right? Just kidding. I just turned it off. Pretty good on your line. Mm -hmm. 
So as you can see, we got these two in, we got one more to do back there. And our joists are running this way, like I mentioned. So that's why we're going ahead and putting our full board this way so we can get that max support. And then these ones that'll be cut to size on the inside, those will just be pocket screwed into this. And that's plenty strong to hold what we're gonna put it up against. So it's real lightweight. But even if it was heavy, I mean, I can hang on this thing. Check this out. So yeah, I, uh... <laughs> oh man, I can't believe that it freaking winded me like that. But the point is, it, it's gonna hold. Oh yeah. What we're going to do with these, we're not going to use a typical pocket hole jig. Uh, we're just going to use a 3 16 drill bit on this drill. Now what we want to do, usually when you think of pocket screwing, you think of you know having it in that jig and then screwing down this way. And that works fine when you have it in that jig. But the key to pocket screws to get them to grab tight is getting that screw to come out of the middle of the board here. And that's a little hard to do without a jig. But what you can do is you can start the bit in the middle and then come out this way. So let me show you, I'll get in the light here. What I'm gonna do is essentially, I'm just putting two of these, it's gonna be more than enough. I'm gonna start in the middle here and then just put a slight angle on it and try to come out somewhere around an inch and a half away from the edge. So pretty much just like this. Just like that. So you don't want to get, see this is perfect right here. You don't want to get too bent like this because you're just going to break that off and split it. So that was actually a perfect example. So I'm going to do that again on the other side. Yeah, those two are dead on. And what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and drive a screw through there and show you how much of that three inch screws gonna grab and bite into what we've already got up there. Actually, I'm not gonna send this all the way because once I do that, they're hard to get out. But you can see that's a big bite that's gonna be grabbing into that next piece. By the time I give it a full send, we're looking at about an inch and three eighths um, bite there. So this will be plenty strong to do what we need it to do. So we're gonna do that to all 12 of these smaller boards. So once we put these pocket screws in, we just put one block in the middle. And when these go together, they're about three foot on center, pretty much. So we got them all right here. And these are all ready to install now. All right, so there you have it. We got the framing done for this coffered ceiling. Pretty excited, I think it looks really good. And I'm even more excited to get started on some of these finished boards tomorrow. We're gonna wrap all this in one by six Windsor one, and then put some crown molding in each coffer. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and watching these videos. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one, which will be trimming out the 16 coffered ceiling right here. See ya.